In 2010, the federal government and a team of industry partners began work on new testing requirements to improve the crashworthiness of the patient cot, also known as the litter or gurney. Through the partnership, cot manufacturers have designed and tested a range of products to meet these new testing requirements. These new testing requirements are now published as SAE J3027. This module will cover cot developments in mounting systems, strength testing, and patient restraint, in addition to providing information on manual and powered cot options. I think it's really important, A, to the safety of the patient, that the cot be held to the floor 100%. The industry standard uh, has used an antler and rail style system to, to affix the cot to the ambulance floor for many years. And that was done because it's very easy to use and there's a lot of familiarity with that over the last uh, few decades. The litter manufacturers have migrated to a new track method of restraint and gurney to go with them. What makes us feel good about some of the current um, COT technology is that there has been crash testing that we, we can actually see the science. There's uh, very specific testing that's been done, slow speed cameras where you can really see the flex points in the stretchers, how things stay secure, where things need to be improved. If you look at how automobiles are tested, there's a specific methodology with the, the dummy and the accelerations. The same dummy that's used for our passenger car standards today, it's the same one that's used by uh, everyone else in the industry, it's the same one that we use. It's a standardized piece of test equipment. So using the test dummy, uh, we were able to measure uh, hick values, neck tension loads, and, and study the effect of the, uh, the new crash standard on a supine patient in an ambulance. The conditions that we wanted to use to evaluate the characterization of the patient compartment in a crash came from the same standards that are used today for passenger vehicles. The new test standards not only require a stronger cot, but they also require a change in those restraints to be able to reduce excursion. When you talk about excursion, that's we, we mean the amount, the distance the dummy would move in a crash test or in a real scenario, it would be the patient that actually is moving in the compartment. I know when you just had the three, three straps, sometimes just the two straps, the new hard brake, those people are flying up front. To me, one of the, the more visible things was the um, securing of the patient to the cot and, and that um, was so dramatic to us in, in such a um, plain way that we wanted to immediately go with the SAE approved strapping mechanisms for the cots because that, that looked like um, things that, that we've all experienced in decelerations, that kind of thing, in the back of an ambulance. The shoulder harness in particular are what keep a patient in place in an accident. And yes, it does take a couple of extra seconds to put those restraints on, but it is the key to making sure that that patient is not going to move or hurt or harm somebody else in the back of the ambulance. It was kind of, well, people didn't want to use it because it was different and it was cumbersome and it was people were, were, uh, really didn't want to do that because um, they thought it would be harder for patient care. The newer style shoulder straps, if you will, you can still very easily uh, do your patient, patient treatment on him without removing them. Even with the use of shoulder restraints, we are seeing patients, uh, a patient excursion uh, sometimes up to 30 inches uh, off the end of the cot. Prior to this, we used a restraint system, a shoulder restraint system that attached at the very head of the stretcher. Um, that left a very large gap there that a patient had to travel through before they met any restraint. So there were some changes from moving the, the restraints right down by the shoulder, or there were some different configurations. And in fact, what we saw was 
reduced excursion from 30 inches down to less than 14. And by limiting that distance, you're enhancing safety and really, you know, keeping the, the patient free from hitting the caregiver or other things in the ambulance. In the following section, you will see demonstrations of manual and powered cots and cot mounting systems that have been tested and meet the requirements of SAE J3027. These demonstrations are provided to help with the decision-making process. Certainly others may become available in the future. There are a range of products out there on the market today. Um, they're from um, basic manual style systems you know, that meet the crash standard uh, through power systems as well. So uh, there should be a, a product that's available uh, for the needs of your particular service. This is the Statrack. It's designed to meet all the new international safety standards as well as the SAE standards that have just been released. So the Statrack fits into that keyhole just like this. So we'll set it in and then slide it and lock it into place and it's ready to operate at this point. And if you look at the cot itself, there's a configuration on the front of it that gives you a post that actually comes into the channel and goes straight into the vehicle. Lock it into place and as you heard the snap, it's locked. And now we'll bring up the carriage. Using good ergonomics, we'll uh, lift that bottom carriage up, keep the cot level and run it straight in. And here's the back end post and that'll go straight in. And then we'll latch it into place and once it's locked, uh, now we're secure into the stat track. Our newest solution for cot fasteners for SAE J3027. That solution is performance load. What performance load is going to have is two locations where your cot is going to lock into the fastener, a rail that runs the length of it that will prevent drifting from left to right, and then a release mechanism to remove your cot when you're unloading. Your ambulance cot will change a little bit as well. There's a pin at the head end as well as a latch down here at the foot end. Those are the two locations where the cot is going to lock in to the fastener to meet that new crash criteria. Let's see how it works. In order to load my cot, I walk it up and I'm going to engage my safety bar with my safety hook, much like you're probably doing today. I then lift my cot up in an ergonomic stance, press and hold the minus button to raise my cot legs, and I can walk this thing in. Notice I don't have to do much looking around to guess to know this thing's in line to lock into place because the system's automatically set up to do that. This is an example of a center mounted uh, power load system. Pull the trolley out. These indicator lights will be flashing amber to let you know that it's ready. So you push forward. All you have to do now to load the patient, press the negative button. The arms are going to automatically come up. Legs come up. You push forward and then it'll just guide in on a rail. Then you're going to notice it's going to automatically settle into the floor and that's when you know you're in transport mode and that is your dynamically crash tested system. So the center mount fastener for the NX is designed to fit right into the floor plates of the stat track. The nice thing about this is as the unit's loaded it takes everything away from the operator so they can actually operate by themselves. So my partner will raise the unit up as you can notice we're bringing it into the vehicle, so the nice thing about this is with the vehicle side to side or forward or backwards, you got an open space here, an open landing area for this unit to come down on the floor of the vehicle. We'll press the minus button, pull it back, we catch the hook, there's the hook, press the minus button again, front legs come up, he's not assuming any weight this time, load it in, pass the second hook, we'll pull it back, press the minus button. One more time. This piece is now holding the unit as well as the front safety hook. And we lock it into the fastener. The cot, the fixation, and the restraints are all part of a system that is, that is tested together. And, and if one piece or part of that is changed, uh, that can have a ripple effect through the rest of the system. So 
All things need to be tested uh, at, together accordingly to make sure that the patient stays attached to the ambulance and, and the proper method. When purchasing a cot for your service, make sure you refer to the requirements in SAE J3027. This is the standard that has been created by the industry to ensure your safety as well as your patient's safety. Change is hard, the industry needs to change. We're all on board here and we're all, we're gonna go through that and, and pretty soon when we look back, we're gonna be glad we did because it was the right thing to do.